In the last video, we were here with Lauren's bike having experienced catastrophic engine issues. But now we're here in Ivory Coast. But what's happened in between? I need to explain something. In Sierra Leone, we visited a place called Bumbuna Falls and we left the bikes for just a few minutes there while we looked at the waterfalls. It was then that thieves struck and took some items off our bikes. Among those items was my laptop charger and two hard drives. On those hard drives wasn't just footage from this trip, but from previous projects as well, so I'm absolutely gutted that they're gone. Now we tried working with the locals and the police, offering rewards to get their return, but nothing came of it. And although the investigation is still ongoing, I doubt our items will ever be recovered. So what footage is missing? Let me tell you. Obviously, we fixed the engine, but how did we do that? Well, our friend Jack, he had a spare CG engine. He got in touch to say we could have it just for beer money. We went and collected that, got back to France, fitted the engine, left Amy, and then we went south. On the first night after fitting the replacement engine, we stayed with a couple named Beno and Amandine in their garden. We enjoyed a few drinks with them, and the next morning crossed the Pyrenees, at the end of December no less. From there we skirted west and south, enjoying a beautiful yet cold first night of wild camping in Spain. Then we headed off to visit Bardenas Realas, a huge off-road playground. There's more than 420 kilometers square of adventure waiting for you here. Then it was a short southwest trip to the town of Vera de Monqueo, where we spent New Year's Eve feeling very out of place. We rejoin the story now on the ninth night in a wild camp just south of a little town named El Tora, a stopover on our way to Valencia. I had to use my best Boy Scout skills to get this fire lit. Absolutely no petrol was involved. So I didn't film us getting into camp, but we found ourselves a nice spot. Uh, it took a second or third attempt to try and find somewhere, but um, yeah, we got set up, we got a fire going, got some water on to boil some pasta, gonna do some pasta, uh, red pepper and chorizo um, with tomato, so it should be a nice hearty dish. How was it? It's really tasty. First taste test. It's actually turned out really well. Mm. Hmm. Might not be Michelin star, but it's going to do a job. Mm. We'll see you in the morning. next morning we retraced our steps from the dirt trail onto the twisty CV25 to continue our journey towards Valencia. We had chosen to head towards the coast as the weather was looking more favourable and on the way it gave us a chance to stop at a Honda dealer to get a replacement chain adjuster as I'd noticed one on Lauren's bike was slightly damaged. Sadly, this store didn't have one, but this guy, Ruben, was an incredible help and found us one further ahead on our route. Palm trees lining the road were a great sight and the weather had improved enough for us to have our first opportunity at removing our coats and testing our vented jackets. We took as many back roads as possible and soaked up the delights of southern Spain. Twisting and turning along the mountain roads was excellent fun. Finally, ending our day at Santa Pola. The next day we were up to enjoy an incredible pre-dawn set of colours as we rode along. On the bikes at half seven, I think, or just after half seven, up at half six, um, and now just enjoying absolutely stunning sunrise. 
and um, it's going to be another episode of Cooking with Tom. What have we got today then? Oh, lovely warm falafels, look at that. Ooh. She's steaming. Ooh. I need to explain about falafels on the bike. Our gas stove was proving unreliable, and so wrapping items in foil and chucking them on the exhaust provided us with a way to eat hot food, as despite the sun, it was still pretty chilly while riding. The mileage ticked over 25,000 miles as we headed further south, still using those Lomo crash bar bags as footrests and enjoying the frequent changes of scenery. We're going to a place that's a desert, and uh, yeah, apparently it's going to be f raining. It's only between 12 and 3 though, but it's now 12. It's going to take us two hours to get there, so we're going to land slap bang in the middle of the rain. And rain it did. At first it wasn't so bad, and then it really came down. The roads were slick, and I've since learnt they use marble in the roads in this area in Spain to cope with the heat in summer. The combination of rain and marble made for a very slippy ride. I just locked the front end up and very nearly came off. Quack. Me. Going into a roundabout, I grabbed the front brake and genuinely... I, I don't know how I didn't crash. We both agreed that at this point, soaking wet and riding with no confidence due to the lack of adhesion on the road, a campsite was in order. We skirted along the coast to the town of Raquetas de Mar, but the campsite was full, so we chose to get an apartment on Airbnb instead and take a well-earned rest day the next day, exploring the town and seaside while catching up on chores like washing. This is the dumping ground. Washing kit everywhere. Oh, what's that? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> The following day, having had our fill of large town life, we avoided the sheep and headed back into the mountain regions, specifically the Sierra Nevada mountains. Seeing snow-capped mountains in the distance with the valleys and gorges was breathtaking. We felt like we could explore Spain for years and never get bored. You'll notice here, we found some friends on big bikes. Derek and Paul are also from the UK and they left after us but didn't take long to catch us up and pass us on the road. Both also heading to South Africa on their own adventure. This morning when I met um, Derek and Paul for a coffee, which you'll have probably just seen a little clip of, or if not, this is a clip. Um, <clears throat> and now we're heading down towards Frigilina, Frigilina um, which is uh, yeah near the near the coast. Uh, it's a little town that Lauren wants to go and see, it looks quite beautiful. So we're gonna head there and then be ready to go into Malaga tomorrow to hit this um, Honda dealer who'll have a chain adjuster. Sadly, the next few days of footage are also casualties of the theft. But we got the chain adjuster from Malaga and continued on our way to the port town of Algeciras, 
after a brief visit to Gibraltar. This was it then, the day we would head to Africa. A mixture of feelings were upon us, but with a beautiful scene setting the day, it felt like today would be a good one. And it was. Sunrise was stunning. We had come to Tarifa, just an hour or so ride from Algeciras. It's the end of the European continent. The most southern point of mainland Europe. Everything else that's further south of this is islands. This is it. I think we've got some signs up here saying the Mediterranean and the Atlantic, so. Mediterranean, Atlantic Ocean. After officially being able to go no further in Europe, we headed back to Algeciras in time to board our ferry, which in true African style was late. A bit more nervous now? I'm so nervous. <laughs> Didn't help that we couldn't find where the bloody hell we were going. Did two laps of the port, I think, going everywhere but the right way. But we made it, we're in the queue, we've kind of checked in, I think. We've still got to do proper stuff, but yeah, let's see. There's the yes. But after 19 days on the road, this was it. Time to board the ferry. In just an hour or so, arrive in Africa, the great unknown for us. I'll leave you with these shots of what's to come next time. <laughs>